So easily are free market economics and privatization confused and thought to be one and the same. First, let me explain what these two concepts are. A free market economy is one where individuals produce goods or services and sell them on the open market. Their success depends on whether or not people are willing to purchase their goods or services and of course on their ability to make a profit from sale of these goods or services. In such a system, you could say people vote with their dollars. If they like the service or food provided or good provided, I said food because I was thinking of McDonald's, but you know, people vote with their dollars when they go to McDonald's. They say, okay, I want this greasy food from various cow parts. So they pay for it. And in voting with their dollars, they make McDonald's more powerful. If McDonald's does not make their customers happy, then they lose business, they become less powerful. And let's go to the other end of the spectrum for just a moment. Social democracy. Advocates of social democracy argue that because these corporations, such as McDonald's, have such considerable power over us, we should be able to vote for them. That is, they essentially want a socialist system where we elect the leaders of the means of production. Now, the advantage there is that we vote at the ballot box, but there's little accountability in the market. They can be as inefficient as they want, and there's no particular harm as long as they keep people voting for them because they're backed by government. Now, in the free market system, there's accountability in the market, but they could also become incredibly powerful. They could consolidate large amounts of wealth and, well, become much like McDonald's, I suppose. Well, in a system of privatization, Privatization is where we take what is normally a public service provided by the government and we divvy it out to the private sector. This is often thought to be a step towards free market economics, but I'm about to prove to you that it is not. And I'm going to hold up three examples to prove my point. Healthcare, prisons, and warfare. These will be my examples. Let's start with healthcare. Um, Paul Ryan proposed a budget a few years ago that was hoped to get us towards fiscal solvency over a certain period of time. One particularly controversial piece of that budget was to turn Medicare more or less into a voucher system. Currently, Medicare is a public service. We pay a tax for Medicare, and when we reach a certain age, or if we are disabled, we qualify. The government then provides a certain amount of health coverage for those who need it. That would be an example of a public service, and that would be compatible, of course, with social democracy. Now, the advocates of a free market economy would say we should purchase our own health insurance, and health insurance companies should have to compete for our business. Well, what Paul Ryan proposed is neither. It's an example of privatization. You see, the government would continue to collect taxes against our will to pay for Medicare, but instead of providing us with health care, the government would give us a voucher and say, go to some private company and buy your insurance. These private companies do not really have to compete for our business because the government's forcing us to do business with them, but there's also not the accountability as to be found in a democracy. So these companies operate for profit and sort of treat us like customers, but we're not really customers. Because customers choose whether or not to um, pay for the goods or services of an establishment. No one's forcing you to go to McDonald's. If you go to McDonald's and get fat, it's your own fault. But with these health insurance companies, we wouldn't have a choice. We have to pay for Medicare. Now, another example, prisons. Prisons are meant to be a public service. These prisons hold dangerous people for a certain amount of time so that they won't go killing people or robbing people, etc. These prisons used to be directly owned by the government, but we've gotten in the habit of privatization. The argument is that a private prison is more efficient than a public prison because the private sector is more efficient than the public sector. That may be true. I'm not here to address that today. But what I will say is that if the private sector is more efficient than the public sector, it's because the private sector has to compete in a free market. Well, this is not a free market. 
if the government pays these companies to build and maintain these prisons, well, the owners of these prison companies, they don't have to compete for customers. They're not going to people saying, hey, would you like to be a prisoner in our prison? We'll treat you really nice. You know, the prisoners are not customers. They're dangerous people who are being held. The only customer would be the government. But you see, the government doesn't operate the way normal people do. They don't have to balance their budgets, as we know. They can possibly print more money if they can convince the Fed to do so. My whole point is, it doesn't operate as it would in a free market. Therefore, the owners of these prisons don't really have to be efficient. Now, I'm sure they can show you some spreadsheets and convince you that they're more cost-effective than public prisons, but we have also seen that the owners of these private prisons lobby for laws that get people arrested more often and hold people for longer periods of time, because the more prisoners they have, the more money they get from the government. This is a very good example of privatization that is definitely not compatible with the free market. Now, the last example I mentioned, warfare, I'm going to be more specific and refer to the invasion of Iraq. We initially invaded Iraq with the public military, with the Marine Corps, with the Army, the Navy, etc. Soldiers are, to some extent, public servants. They are paid for directly by our tax dollars. They are employed by the government. However, private companies like Blackwater, they are not public servants. They, that is a for-profit security company. And Blackwater was hired to continue the occupation of Iraq. They were hired as security. In reality, they're more or less mercenaries. They were paid by our government to maintain the occupation of Iraq so that other companies like Halliburton could go in and start extracting oil. So, if you take a company like Halliburton and their security service, imagine if they really did have to compete in a free market. They would have to convince private companies to hire them for security services. Now, if you know anything about private security companies, um, they're not particularly well paying. Usually security officers make about eight fifty an hour, $9 an hour, etc. Some of them might make $12 an hour if they're armed. But if you work for a company like Blackwater, you make quite a bit more money. I don't know how much, but I've heard they make much better money than our soldiers. So they are making an artificially high wage because they are privatized, but they are not free market. It's a private for-profit company backed by the might of the U.S. government. So I hope I've made the point here. A free market requires companies to actually compete for business, whereas privatization allows companies to be greedy and operate for profit as they would in a free market. However, they do not have to compete for customers anymore. That's the distinction. So I hope this clarifies it all. If you are a libertarian or any kind of advocate of a free market, then understand that privatization is not a step towards free market. Um, I would add, actually, that when we privatize, these companies just get all the more entrenched. Think about Obamacare. Now that these private companies are guaranteed a customer base, now that we must buy private insurance or else face a tax, do you think these private insurance companies want to see that change? I would think not. If there are efforts to repeal the health care mandate, you mark my words, those private health insurance companies, they will lobby against it. Well, thank you for watching my channel. I hope this has been educational.